lot of people now are talking top level. Like, hey, I deserve that money. I am top level. Titan was talking about this trade and the biggest problem. That's right. I'm underpaid. You know, I'm underpaid. And I feel now I feel like mistreated and, and all this. And I just want to like come back and I just want to touch on a few points. Like, that's what I said. And that is the truth. There, there are a ton of top level people that do not get paid enough in this trade. But there's also a lot of people that think they're top level that don't deserve that money, right? Just because you're top level in your shop does not mean that you are entitled to six figures or more. Just because you think, just because you got 30 years in the game does not mean. I always say like, man, there's two pillars, right? I talk about being a pillar, being, being a foundational piece underneath a company, making that company money and helping all those around you lift up. Like that's what I'm talking about top level. When, when your sheer presence steps onto a floor, right? One person might step onto the floor and actually take one single machine and, and raise its productivity up 20%. And like, that's awesome. That's a great employee. But I'm talking about somebody who actually steps onto a floor and their enthusiasm, their attitude is infectious. Like everybody like feeds off of them. And all of that know-how, that, that 20, 30 years of seeing like crazy machining and crazy cuts and testing tools and seeing all the different fixtures that this world has to offer and, and inventing like fixtures in their heads and like just designing crazy tombstones and doing all that. When that person can draw on all of that experience and walk from machine to machine to machine and basically help out all the employees and allows like 30 machines to all raise 20%. Now that person is a pillar. That person deserves that money. Like it deserves that money. So that's what I'm talking about. But there's, a, there, there's another pillar that is almost a cancer, you know? I don't want to come out too hard because, you know, some people, you know, some people are just built certain ways and stuff. But at the end of the day, like, understand who you are and, and, and where you're going and what you deserve. As I said, like, I always say, like, your, your job is to come in and help, you know, create a good environment. But even more than that, your job is to make that company money. If you make somebody money, then you deserve money. That is the name of the game, period. But there's a lot of people out there that basically, you know, they're pillars, but they're pillars like in the waters. You know what I mean? Like they're a pillar sticking out of the ocean and the tide is rising and it's going to overcome them. You know, that means like these machinists that are like, oh, I've always done it like this. Oh, that program's been running for 20 years. Oh, the program's been running for three years. Like, leave it alone. Don't spend time on that. I program that. You don't touch don't touch that. You know what I mean? Those guys or women, that's what I'm talking about. You know, like the ones that they don't want to try new things. They feel like they have learned everything. They're not a student of the game anymore. They have no, they don't, they lack the passion, but they've been in the game for a long time. So they're like, you know, top dog in their company. You know, but at the end of the day, man, the world's changing and technology is changing so fast. And we need people to be pillars in companies and we need people to like look and never give up and never say I learned it all you know be a student of the game every single second of your life and always understand that every single program every fixture can always be made better always be looking for the better tool the better feed rates the better surface foot looking at the longevity of how long the tool lasts in cut you know a lot of people say like oh you can't run like this you can't do this you can't do that I'm like I'm like, dude, like there are levels and there's different variables and, and there's this game is so big. You know what I mean? Like you think I'm just like running everything and finishing just like this, man. I'm going to like I'm going to like look at the fixture and I'm going to look at the, the work holding. Right. I'm going to look at the machine. I'm going to look at the power. I'm going to look at where the power is at, where the sweet spots at. I'm going to look at the spindle connection. I'm going to look at the tool holder, the tool. I'm going to set my material in a way to have success. So I have rigidity through the whole thing. And then I'm going to get after it because one person might take this part and it takes 
30 minutes to rough it. But if it takes me 15 minutes or even 10 minutes or even five minutes, which is definitely possible and that happens all the time, then how much money am I actually saving? Now, you want to be like, oh, you're going to break the machine. No, I'm going to get after it for 5, 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to actually save this company money. And then I'm going to like, boom, I'm going to release that pressure. I'm going to come back with a different tool. I'm going to come in. I'm going to kiss that baby right into spec. Boom. You know, so a lot of machinists will complain and, and talk about what they what they knew. If, if you came from the past and you only saw a Model T, and you came from like the early 1900s and you saw a Lamborghini and you were going like a hundred miles an hour, you'd be like thinking this thing's going to flip. There's no way like, oh, you're going to kill us, right? You can't even comprehend that that thing can just go twice that fast, go 200 or more. That's how it is in machining. Like people, they, they set up roadblocks for themselves. They used to run here. They got to here. They think that that's incredibly fast and they can't even comprehend something else. So we need people that actually look at all the variables, all the machines, all the employees, and has, has a servant's heart, then steps into that gap, and because of their presence, the entire shop rises up, all the productivity rises up, and allows the entire company to be productive. And tomorrow, we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna raise the game even higher, because yesterday was not good enough, it, it just was the foundation to get us to where we are now. So let's go, baby. Let's make this happen right now. Like manufacturing is so much fun. Like when people like have that attitude and they say, oh, we can't do this or we can't do that. And they, they run slow and and <laughs> they're not efficient. And they, I mean, that's just boring. I don't know. I don't even understand how that happens. We need to come into work. We need to understand that this is the greatest trade in the history of the world. We have a gift to be on these CNC machines. We are taking something from nothing and, and machining like incredible components for like submarines and rockets and, and everything in between. Everything somebody touches somehow has been machined, whether it's the mold or the part or all of it. I mean, it's the greatest trade in the world. It's big, it's vast. You can never learn enough. You can never stop learning. You have to be a student of this game. But guess what? When you start running efficient and you start fixturing and you, you take run times from 30 minutes down to 15 minutes and you do it in a consistent level and you figure out the fixturing and you figure out like, you know, how to actually just do all these different things to save the company money, it becomes fun your attitude all of a sudden you're not looking at that clock you're looking at the machine you're looking at what you did and you're being judged based on your productivity your creation your mind because the machine is a machine it takes an individual to raise that game and it takes a true leader to come in and go beyond the one machine and take all the employees to the highest level and encourage them and feed them with that knowledge that they gained over a lifetime of experience and that person when they truly are running efficient when they truly are running fast and hard and and coming and kissing everything and and delivering perfect parts to spec to the customer on a daily basis that person that just their sheer like attitude will and talent allows everyone to rise up that person is a pillar and that person deserves beyond so long the company's making money you got to make the company money but if the company's making good money and productivity is through the roof whoever that top dog is they deserve more than six figures people say like oh machinists could never make two hundred thousand dollars some of these top ceos man they make millions and millions and millions because they walk into an entire company they make critical changes and the entire company that made a billion dollars then makes two billion dollars. So that one person actually helped influence a billion dollars. So they deserve a cut. It is absolutely true. It's the way the world works. But if a machinist comes onto a floor that produces a hundred million dollars worth of parts and they actually influence that floor to actually raise by 20%, that person deserves to be taken care of. You know, when I left my first shop at Zanola, I mean, this isn't about me, but my, my owner, the owner of the company, Kevin Zanola, he offered to buy me a house if I would stay at his company, but I just had dreams and aspirations and I wanted to venture out. But that's what, when you find that person, when you find that person 
that is at the top of their game and and their influence comes into that company and like changes all of your employees lives and takes your productivity to the highest level you need to take care of that employee because that is a pillar that's what i'm talking about and that's who deserves the money